Uh, all right, so let's see. We're trying to take benzoic acid, the first one, and convert it into this secondary alcohol. So the first thing that comes to my mind is if we had an acid chloride, so if we had the acid chloride, actually the first thing that comes to my mind is could we make the ketone? Could we make the ketone? Because we can reduce the ketone, we could use lithium aluminum hydride, or you could use sodium borohydride, either way would work. Then, you know, how do we make a ketone? Well, we saw that we could make a ketone from not a carboxylic acid. We could make one from an acid chloride. If we had benzyl chloride, which we can make very easily, using a Gilman reagent. So Gilman, Gilman, or a cuprate. So R2, so in this case, it would be this. That can go directly to the, um, the ketone from the acid chloride, right? So we wouldn't have to worry about, you know, trying to do green yard and aldehydes and all that kind of crap. It would make it very simple. So then that really breaks it down to just a three-step synthesis, right? First, we have to make the acid chloride using thionyl chloride. And then we can use the Gilman reagent to make the ketones. So you, we would use the ethyl cuprate. That gives us the desired ketone. And then we could just reduce it. Why don't we pick sodium borohydride? Doesn't get used a lot. And we could even pick a solvent. You could put, you know, methanol or something like that. And that would give you this secondary alcohol. So I'd say the real key step in here you know, would be the Gilman reagent. We haven't used it yet in any of the syntheses. So that's um, probably the best way I can think of to do this synthesis, the easiest way, the shortest route. Are there others? Probably. But this one is very, very expeditious. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's move on and try B. Another one where we need to make carbon-carbon bonds. So this is, oops. There we go. This one I think is pretty cool. And I think, so we're starting with, no, sorry, sorry. We're starting with benzyl, or sorry, bromobenzene. And we want to make this compound where we have methylene and then we have an acetyl group on here. Well, the first thing that I think is the acetyl group, we looked at the synthesis of aspirin and Tylenol. So all we need is this alcohol, benzyl alcohol, and then we can just treat that with acetic anhydride the same way they make Tylenol in, in, um, in aspirin using acetic anhydride. So then the question becomes, well, how do I get from here to here? I can think of a couple of different ways. They both involve green yard chemistry. I think the easiest way would be, and this is kind of the sneakier way, uh, would be to treat it first with magnesium in ether to make your phenyl green yard, and then for your electrophile, use formaldehyde. So formaldehyde is your green yard, and then of course you need to treat that with aqueous acid, and what that would give you would be this. So here's, I'll highlight this carbon in red. That would give you this compound, right? Where you have benzyl alcohol, and then all you have to do is treat that with acetic anhydride, or you could, this just came to me, you could um, treat it with, uh, you know, uh, acetyl chloride and pyridine. Either one would work. Okay, so that would be the easiest synthesis I can think of. However, I had made a note to myself here that students have tried to synthesize this using, uh, using, um, or going through benzoic acid. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, let me show you quickly, just so we don't take up too much time on a route that's not as simple. So what a lot of my students said was, and I would accept this, take this, make the green yard. So now we have phenyl, magnesium, bromide. 
we treat that with CO2 and H3O plus to make benzoic acid. So now that you've got benzoic acid, you can reduce that benzoic acid using lithium aluminum hydride. So we'll put here one LAH, two, we'll just put water in here. And that would give you the benzyl alcohol that you desire. And then you could just treat that with acetic anhydride, or you could use this method either way. And that would give you the product. Okay, that, that totally works. There's nothing wrong that way. I think that this way is just like a step shorter or something. Both perfectly acceptable in my mind. Nothing wrong with either of them. And the last one that we're going to do today, I think is the trickiest one of all of these, which is starting with benzonitrile, so 20.32. See, starting with this compound, so benzonitrile. And we want to make this really interesting looking compound here where we have two methyl groups here. Then we have an oxygen here. Then we have an acetyl group. Now the acetyl group, as far as that retrosynthesis goes, I would think, okay, well, if I could make this alcohol, I can just acetylate it using acetic anhydride or um, acetyl chloride and pyridine. So then the question becomes, well, how do I make this compound? And the way that I would think about making this would be from the acid chloride. And this is another thing that we haven't really looked at a lot today. But if I have the acid chloride and I treat it with excess methyl magnesium bromide followed by aqueous acid, that's going to give me this compound, right? It's going to add the green yard two times. So then the question becomes, well, how do I get from here to here? Well, one of the reactions we looked at when we talked about cyanohydrins and we looked at it today is if you treat this nitrile with H3O plus in heat, you can make the carboxylic acid derivative. So if I make the carboxylic acid derivative, then I can just convert that into the acid chloride using thionyl chloride. There's my acid chloride like this. Then I use my excess green yard. So one, the excess methyl magnesium bromide. Two would be H3O plus. That would give me the desired alcohol, this guy. And then I just acetylate it. Let's pick, let's pick a acetyl chloride, acetyl chloride and pyridine just for fun. Like that, and that's really the only way I can think to make that compound off the top of my head. The very last section of the chapter are things that we would have covered in um, organic chemistry one. So I'll just show you quickly here. You scroll down way at the end. The very last section just deals with the spectroscopy of carboxylic acids. And this is something that if you took the organic chemistry one lab at UCCS, we would have looked at a lot of these functional groups in detail. For example, the wave number for the stretching frequency of the carbonyl group of an acid chloride is higher than that of an anhydride. And then it goes down to carboxylic acid, ester, ketone, amide. Um, so yeah, we looked at this in detail. We also talked about conjugated carbonyls how the bond is weakened, and so they absorb at lower wave numbers. What else? We talked about the hydroxyl stretching frequency of um, a carboxylic acid, how it's really broad. The nitrile triple bond shows up at around 2200. Then we talked about carbonyls, how those usually have very high chemical shifts in the carbon-13. Um, and a carboxylic acid is always a dead giveaway in the proton. Uh, spectrum because it has a chemical shift of around 12. We don't look at anything with a chemical shift that's that high. So what do I recommend doing, you know, moving forward would be to make sure that you review this slide over and over and then try to apply it to practice problem after practice problem after practice problem until you feel like you have mastered the content. Is there a lot of chemistry in here? There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of chemistry in here. But again, practice will make perfect. It's the best way to master the content.